Hey, welcome back to this week's episode of On the Level Leadership. I was speaking at an event last night, and as part of the Q&A, a question came up around the notion of tall poppy syndrome. Do you know what that is? Well, stay tuned to learn all about it. So tall poppy syndrome is a, a concept um, that a term actually that was sort of originated out of Australia and I believe New Zealand, um, but is relevant to many, many cultures around the world. Essentially, tall poppy syndrome refers to a social phenomenon where people are criticized or cut down because of their success or their achievements. And this can happen in very different contexts, such as like in the workplace or among friends or even in families. The term tall poppy comes from the idea that the tallest poppy in the field is the most visible and therefore the most likely to be cut down or picked. So similarly, those who stand out due to their accomplishments or their successes, be they financial or otherwise, are often seen as a threat to other people, which leads to the concept of jealousy and resentment and criticism. It's interesting because in Japan, they have a similar expression and it's called the nail that sticks up the most gets hammered down. <laughs> And in the Netherlands, this same expression is don't put your head above ground level. In Chile, the expression is known as chakatia, which is pull up the jacket. And in Scandinavia, the same expression is known as the law of jant. And the law of jant comes, from the, uh, comes with rules such as you're not to think that you're anything special. So I have a question. Is this something you've experienced? Have you received accolades and then the very next day, get all sorts of criticisms from people or hear about people talking behind your back or what have you. Well, an example of tall poppy syndrome, in case you're wondering, is if someone gets like a promotion, like I just said, at work or achieves a personal goal, like losing a bunch of weight, and they'll come with criticism and negativity from their colleagues, their friends who feel envious of their success. So another example might also be, for example, a student being ridiculed by their peers for getting the highest grade in class. This um, syndrome can really cause a toxic environment, both at work or in school or their home environment. And it typically discourages people from pursuing their goals or striving for success. And finally, one of the other examples that we see publicly is how the media portrays successful individuals, especially I would say celebrities. You know, instead of celebrating their achievements, the media and the folks that read and watch the media tend to focus on the negative aspects of their personal lives to bring them down a notch so that they don't get too high on themselves. So while tall poppy syndrome is not gender specific, it's genderless, the reality is, is that women in particular are hit hard by this, especially very ambitious women or people who have achieved a certain level of career success. We're critiqued by often, most often we're critiqued on our appearance. Sometimes it's the clothing they wear or the way they show up, the way they speak. The way I heard it growing up and what I heard in my career were things like, don't be too much, stop showing off, turn down the Tammy. Why do you have to be so vocal? You're so damn assertive. Well, in fact, when I was speaking last night, it was very interesting because I was speaking on the topic of women in leadership and how important it is for us to lead, right? And it was brought up as a real life issue for some of the women in the room. There was women who felt that their careers were stifled and that they were somehow had to be kept in their place the moment that they shone too much. Tall poppy syndrome is very damaging because it really stifles innovation and progress. I mean, think about it. If you're worried about being successful and actually achieving something, then you feel like you might lose something or you might be ridiculed in some way if you stand out too much. In fact, one of the challenges I have as a coach consultant, and I've actually struggled with my entire life, has been the notion of being too successful. Anytime I've had some kind of success, I tend to self-sabotage that success for fear of sticking out too much. And even as I was working with my coach this afternoon, the notion of I don't want to be too much sort of comes out in my own vernacular. And that's beyond crazy considering what I have managed to successfully achieve over the course of my career, including the success I've achieved with my clients in the course of my career as a coach. So when we see success around us, we should be celebrating them and supporting their achievements rather than tearing them down or participating in any gossip that does. Because when we do that, we create a more positive and encouraging environment that encourages everyone to strive for success and everyone really at the end of the day gains uh, when we do that. What if you think you're a victim of tall poppy syndrome yourself? What do you do about that? What are some tactics you can put in place today to help you overcome this? 
Well, the first thing you can do is focus on your goals and your own accomplishments. This can be a tough, tall order for people, especially if you lack the resilience needed to understand that you own and deserve to give yourself permission to be okay with the successes you've received and the accolades you've received in your life. It's a tall order because you really do need to get clear about your goals and you need to also recognize and internalize and acknowledge all the things that you've successfully accomplished in your life, regardless of what others around you say. The second thing is surround yourself with supportive people. That is not an easy task if you're surrounded by negativity. Take it from me, I was raised by toxic people who routinely didn't honor what I brought to the table and were always telling me to dial it down, to be quiet, you're too loud, you're presenting too much, you know, tone it down, stop showing off. All those phrases came to me when I was younger. So as I, and as I grew up as an adult and was an executive, you have potential, but you're too much, you're too vocal, you're too everything, right? So sometimes it's hard because we haven't surrounded ourselves with the right people. So find a mentor, get a coach, Talk to people who are like-minded and progressively thinking. Talk to other successful people because other successful people will be happy for you in your success. The people that will usually try to bring you down are the ones that are struggling with their own success in life. The third thing is don't let other people's negativity bring you down. Again, a very tall order, especially if you're feeling beaten down by the other's opinions of you. But if you surround yourself with the right people and you get the right feedback, you can really start to focus on the positive aspects of the success you are achieving for yourself. Additionally, the other thing too is go inward, do some meditation, really focus on who you are and get clear about your truth. Forget what others tell you, get clear about who you are. Remember that great leaders know, they know how to enable and encourage other people. And so start inward with giving yourself permission to be and to feel successful, whatever that looks like. So look past the naysayers and understand that their statements say more about them and their insecurities than it does about you. And if you're lacking clarity on the goals or you're feeling blocked in your career growth, maybe tall poppy syndrome has really affected your confidence and your ability to move forward in your career. I'm here to help you. I can provide a quick 25 minute power session to help you reframe your ambition and really start to work at overcoming the blocks that you have about your own career growth. This is particularly poignant for the ladies out there who have experienced tall poppy syndrome. You know, maybe you just got promoted as a VP and now everybody's criticizing your suits or how you're showing up or whatever, and it's really affecting your confidence. Maybe you feel like maybe I shouldn't be ambitious. Maybe it's not right for me to be ambitious at this point in my life. So whatever the case, if you're blocked and you feel like you're stressed out about this, I can help you. There will be a link down below, and I believe I'm going to be working in the next week or so on some takeaways away information that you can also take a freebie that will talk about the the top five or the top 10 blocks that women often have when it comes to their career growth aspirations and how to overcome them. In the meantime, folks, take care of yourself. Please don't be the guy who comes and cuts the poppy off the field. Let the tall poppy be the tall poppy. And let's just all try to get along and encourage each other to be successful and be happy for others around us because that's what real leaders do. That's it for this week, folks. I appreciate you being here. If you got anything out of this video, please like and subscribe. And if you're listening on the podcast, make sure you follow this podcast because I am here pretty routinely providing all sorts of tidbits and information and sharing experiences and stories with you so that you can be a better leader, a more confident leader, so you can be the best you can be and grow in your career in the way that you want to grow that aligns with your passion. Anyhow, take care of yourself, folks. Until next time.